Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion. We started here in Lecture 30, uh, but we're going to move from Section 10.1 to Section 10.2 about calculus with parametric curves uh, based upon examples we saw in James Stewart's calculus textbook. So now that we have a good idea of, of these parametric curves, what we want to do is start considering cal doing calculus uh, with these parametric curves. So we're talking about limits, derivatives, integrals, the whole shebang right there, right? And so how does one do a calculation? How does that one do calculus with parametric curves? Well, it turns out that for limits, there's really not a whole lot that's going to be going on here. So I mean, we first of all should mention that our curve is given by x equals f of t and y equals g of t. These are, these are going to be our, our parametric equations. So cal calculation of limits is going to be basically the exact same thing we saw in calculus 1. We can calculate... Uh, the limit of x as t approaches a, some value. We can calculate the limit of y as t approaches b or something like that, right? We can calculate we can calculate these limits of the function. And so if we want to calculate the limit, like say x approaches some number a, what happens to y? Well, we just have to figure out, well, how does how does t approach this value, right? Um, and so, I mean, this, this, this is just going to be a slight sleight of hand here. You have to switch over. Well, we don't want to describe it in terms of x. So let's say that we have to compute the limit x. The limit of x will equal a as, say, t approaches some value alpha. And then you plug that in over here. t approaches alpha. You can handle something like that. Derivatives are going to be the same basic idea, right? Uh, we can calculate the derivative of x with respect to t, the derivative of y with respect to t by the usual derivative rules. But the issue with the kind of, that gets a little bit tricky is when we start to look at slopes of tangent lines, right? What if we want to compute y prime? And by y prime, we really mean dx over or dy over dx. That is, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? Because if we want to describe the slope of tangent lines, then we need to have rise over run which means a change of y over a change of x. A small change of y is what dy is. A small infinitesimal change of x is what dx means. So to find a change of uh, uh, take rise over run, we need to get dy over dx. And it turns out using the chain rule, we can accomplish this. Because notice that dy over dt by the chain rule is going to equal dy over dx times dx over dt. Notice the dx cancel, you get dy over dt. Now, to solve for dy over dx, which is what we have right here, just divide by the dx over dt on both sides of the equation, like so. And you get this, this guy right here. dy over dx is equal to the derivative of y with respect to t and the derivative of x with respect to t. Now, because there's multiple variables going on here, one has to be careful when we say things like y prime or x prime. Um, in this context, we will never ever say x prime. We'll be specific in what we mean here. And when we say y prime, we will always mean dy dt. Uh, d, sorry, dy dx in this context. If we want to talk about the derivative of y with respect to t, we will write it out, dy over dt, to avoid confusion right here. So dy over dx or y prime will equal the derivative of y with respect to t over the derivative of x with respect to t. Now this is a valid form as long as the derivative with respect the derivative of x with respect to t is not zero. If it were zero, we actually would have a vertical tangent line at the location, so we can handle it. Uh, and then we get an equation for our tangent line, the usual equation. y equals k is equal to dy over dx times x minus h. And so we can describe tangent lines of parametric curves so long as we remember to adapt the derivative. We need dy over dx. We can also do similar things for higher derivatives, but one has to be careful, right? If we take the example of the second derivative, dy, or d squared y over dx squared, for shorthand, we will call this y double prime, right? Now, the, the, the second derivative, by its definition, is the derivative of the derivative. So we have to take the derivative with respect to x of the first derivative, dy over dx. And so by the principle we saw above, you're going to take the derivative of y prime with respect to t and divide that by the derivative of x with respect to t. Or in shorthand, I like to think of it as dy prime over dt divided by dx over dt. The important thing to realize here is that the second derivative of y with respect to x is not the quotient of the second derivative of y with respect to t with the second derivative of x with respect to t. That's a very common confusion that um, students try to do right here. Um, why is there 
So this, so the thing is our second, um, our second derivative doesn't look like this. It should look like this, although I don't want to put an equal sign there. Yeah, are, these two things are what's equal. Uh, D y prime over dt over dx dt. That's that's the correct um, anti. That's that's the correct the correct second derivative right there. And so I want to show you an example uh, using these principles here. So we have a parametric curve C, which is given by the formula x equals t squared and y equals t cubed minus three t. And so you can see an illustration of what this thing looks like um, with some examples given to you. For example, when t equals zero, you'll have the origin zero, zero. When t equals one, you'll be at the point one comma negative two. When t equals, two, uh, let's see, when t equals, well, actually this would be t equals the square root of three. We'll come back to this in a moment. We'll come back to that one in a moment. When t equals negative one, you'll be at the point one, two. And you get this, you get this sort of loop-de-loop. -loop. I guess it goes more like this. You get this loop-de-loop. -loop. Uh, it looks something like this, like you're riding the Incredit Coaster at Disneyland or something like that. So here, this is what the graph is going to look like. What I want to do is I want to actually describe the two tangent lines at the point 3, 0. So we can see on the graph that this graph seems to intersect 3, 0 and, uh, twice, right? Because if you follow the loop-de-loop, -loop, you're going to pass through 3, 0 here, and you're also going to pass through it right here. And as such, you actually get two tangent lines at the same location. Uh, two distinct tangent lines. You can see one of them right here in green, and then another one right here, right there. Uh, clearly, my squiggles aren't too straight there. How are we going to find them? Well, the first thing to do is how do you how do you get zero? How do you get the point three zero in the first place? What's the parameter t? Now, notice that if if x y equals three zero, that would imply that x, which is t squared, equals three, and y which is equal to t cubed minus 3t is equal to zero, right? And solving these equations, right? The first one for x is pretty easy. Um, if you solve for t, you're gonna get t equals plus or minus the square root of three. So that's why you get two, you're gonna get two tangent lines because there's two parameters that might work. But be aware that t equaling plus or minus the square root of three makes x equal to three. Do those simultaneously make y equal to zero? And if you try to solve this equation, you can factor out a t, you get t squared minus three equals zero. And so you're gonna see that, okay, t could equal zero or plus or minus three, square root of three. Okay, so those work. So this point right here, um, if you come through on this side, that's what happens when you get t equals negative root three. And when you come through on this side, that's when t equals the square root of three, which the square root of three will be between one and two as a real number. So that does match up with what we see here on the graph. Can we find an equation for this? Well, the first thing to do is we have to find the derivative. We want to find, we need to find dy over dx, which like we saw before, this is dy over dt divided by dx over dt. All right, and so let's do those calculations. Uh, the derivative of x with respect to t, we're gonna be taking the derivative of t squared here, t squared prime with respect to t, you're gonna get a two t, that's nice. A dy over dt, take its derivative with respect to t, t cubed minus 3t. By the usual power rule, you get 3t squared minus 3, like so. And so dy over dx then has the form 3t squared minus 3 over 2t. And so that is our first derivative right here, which if you want to, you can factor out some of the coefficients. You get 3 halves and this will sit above t squared minus one over t. And so we're interested in what is the derivative, what's the slope of the tangent line when t, so if we evaluate this thing, when t equals plus or minus the square root of three, let's evaluate this here, t equals plus or minus the square root of three. So when you evaluate it at plus or minus the square root of three, notice you're gonna end up with three halves. Well, when you square, Right here, the square root of three or the negative square root of three, you're gonna get a three, three minus one. And on the bottom, you're gonna see plus or minus the square root of three. And so of course, three minus one is two. That's gonna cancel with the two that's down here. So we end up with three over plus or minus the square root of three, which if you rationalize that, then you're gonna get plus or minus the square root of three. So the slopes of these tangent lines are both square root of three, well, plus or minus the square root of three. The positive one will be positive, the negative one will be negative. 
And so once you have the slope here, you can then plug in and find the tangent line. You're going to get y minus 0 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 times x minus 3, like so. Uh, and then coming back up to our diagram, you see that when you are on the negative approach, you're going to get this tangent line right here. y equals negative square root of 3 times x minus 3. When you're on the positive approach, you're going to get this tangent line right here. y equals positive square root of 3 times three min uh, x minus 3. So we can find tangent lines exactly like we did before, so long as we make sure we're using for our tangent slope dy over dx. Don't be, we only use dy over dt and dx over dt to help us find dy over dx. We need rise over run. Uh, but using the second derivative, we can also some, make some statements about concavity. Oh, we'll get to that one in just a second. Uh, I want to look for horizontal tangent lines and vertical tangent lines. So what we know is uh, a, a, a horizontal tangent line coincides when dy over dx equals 0. Now, the only way that a fraction can equal 0 is when, let me kind of erase this, the fraction can only equal 0 when its numerator equals 0, and that numerator is going to be dy over dt. So the horizontal tangents are going to coincide when dy over dt equals 0. And similarly, the vertical tangents are when the is when dy over dx is undefined, but more specifically, when its denominator goes to 0. Well, the denominator of dy over dx is dx over dt. So the vertical tangents coincide when the, the denominator goes to zero right there, all right? Uh, let's go back there, and I'm going to erase this line so we have some room to work here. So from what we saw above, dy over dt was 3t squared minus 3. So if we solve that, 3t squared minus 3 equals 0. We can divide everything by 3. We get t squared minus 1 equals 0. This would tell us that t squared equals 1, or that is t equals plus or minus 1. The horizontal tangents are going to occur at the parameters t equals 1 and t equals negative 1, which if we come here, they're already labeled here on the graph. When x equals 1, we're going to be at the point x equals 1, y equals negative 2. That's a horizontal tangent. And then the other one's at t equals negative 1 right here, uh, which will correspond to the point x equals 1, y equals positive 2, like so. What about the vertical tangent lines? Well, we have to solve the equation dx over dt equals 0, which as we saw before, dx over dt um, is equal to 2x, so that's actually a fairly simple equation to solve. We have to solve 2t, oops, I have to color code this correctly, 2t equals 0, well that implies that t equals 0. So you'll have a vertical tangent when the parameter is equal to 0. So coming up over here, we see that there's a vertical tangent right here when t equals 0. That'll be when x equals 0 and y equals 0. And we found this coordinates by plugging into the parametric equations. So we can find and identify uh, tangent lines using uh, this, this notion of tangent lines we did before, but we just have to kind of change a little bit how we handle the derivative. All right, now let's get to this notion of concavity. Concavity. When is the curve concave up and when is it concave down? Well, it's concave upward when the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared, is positive. It'll be concave downward when the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared, is negative. So what we have to first do is actually compute the second derivative. So what we saw earlier, y prime y prime from the above, the above discussion, we had 3 halves times t squared minus 1 over t. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to write this as 3 halves times t minus uh, t to the negative 1. Preparing now for a derivative, if we compute dy prime over dt, this is going to be 3 halves comma 1 plus t to the negative 2. Uh, which if we want to write this back as a fraction, uh, we can do that. But I think, ooh, do I want to, do I want to, can we just leave it alone for right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, ah, uh, now nah, let's, let's, let's take care of this thing. We get three halves times one plus one over t squared. We can, 
uh, we can tie, well, we want to write this thing as a t squared over t squared, uh, like so. And so then we end up with, for our dy prime dt, we're going to get 3 times t squared plus 1, and this sits above 2t squared. And so that way, d squared y over dx squared, remember this is dy prime over dt divided by dx over dt. And so we record what we had before, 3 times t squared plus 1 over 2t squared divided by dx dt, which remember that was before just a 2t. And so we're going to get that the second derivative or the so-called y double prime. This is equal to 3 times t squared plus 1 over 4t cubed, like so. And so we want to determine when is this thing positive, when is this thing negative. Well, some things to notice, 3 is positive. You probably already knew that. 4 is positive. You might be confused on that one. Just kidding there. Uh, t squared plus 1 is always positive. For any real number, t squared will always be greater than equal to 0. If you add 1, it's always going to be greater than equal to 1. Therefore, it's greater than equal to 0. So you're always going to get a positive here, here, and here. Um, the only one in suspect here is t cubed. Uh, you know, when is t cubed greater than 0? Well, taking the cube root, that'll be when t is when t is positive, right? And so we see right here that the second derivative will be positive exactly when the parameter is positive, and the second derivative will be negative exactly when the parameter, t, is negative. Coming back up to our picture, uh, we get this right here. How we want to interpret this is that when you have a negative, when you have a negative parameter, right, when you have a negative parameter, your curve is over here. So just look at the, well, I guess the direction actually is going like this. But if you look at just that blue cart, notice the graph in that location is concave downward, just like we saw with the second derivative. And if we look at the portion which corresponds to the positive parameter, this half of the graph, this actually does form a concave upward curve. And so using the second derivative, d, d squared y over dx squared, aka y double prime, we can still determine things like concavity. When is it concave up? When is it concave down? So all the principles of curve sketching that we've learned in the past apply to parametric curves. We just have to make sure that when we talk about derivatives, by y prime, we mean dy over dx. This will describe tangent lines. This will describe monotonicity. And by double, y double prime, we mean exactly d squared y over dx squared. This will describe concavity. And so one can actually use these principles to describe curves in uh, as variables of times, or we can think of a uh, two-dimensional motion can be described uh, as long as we make sure we're using the correct derivatives here.